What's up guys, Sean here, Shock Surplus, Jeff Lazo here with his Silverado. Uh, he's got a 2021 RST Z71 Duramax diesel. Over this year, we've kind of started the whole buyer's guide journey on this thing, right? So the factory ranchos went to uh, RS 9000s first, and then Bill Stein's 5100s and then now they're on the Fox 2.0 snap rings. So uh, this is just gonna be a little snap ring Fox 2.0 review. If you guys haven't seen the 5100 review, check that out. Definitely one of our, one of the most in-demand products for this vehicle, but also one of our just biggest sellers in general here at Shock Surplus. So let's talk about how it felt going from Bill Stein to Fox, because those two shocks always get matched up together, right? We know they're vastly different designs. So kind of just like, what does that mean for you, the driver? Yeah, so the jump from the Bill Steins to the Foxes, right off the bat, the Foxes felt a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. The small road vibrations just felt a lot smoother with the Foxes. Yeah. Uh, I would say compression damping fuel uh, wise, they felt more similar to how comfortable the Ranchos were. Mm -hmm. But where the Ranchos kind of lacked was they didn't have proper rebound damping, so it just yeah. bounced all over the place. Yeah. But the Foxes, they're comfortable over speed bumps, potholes, mm -hmm. but they have proper rebound damping, so it's yeah. not bouncing all over the place after. Whereas the Bill Steins, they, they felt more firm. Yeah, they didn't um, give as much. Potholes felt a little bit more firm, but there was less body roll, which I personally liked with the Bill Steins. Towing a bit, moving up the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so towing and hauling, Bill Steins felt a little bit better. Didn't feel like the, the Bill Steins relied so much on extra spring from the rear, mm -hmm. like the, the sumo springs. Whereas the Foxes benefited from the extra spring rate in the rear through the sumo springs uh, when towing and hauling. Backtrack a little bit when we're talking about compression and rebounds. The one thing that stands out on my mind driving this truck on the factory ranchos was driving up our driveway outside from the street. Like you hit it and it's nice and soft, but then you come up and it's just like floppy. And so when there's no rebound, then it forces another compression action as it's like kind of recovering. And so when we go from those factory floppy ranchos into a Bilstein where it might be firmer on the initial compression, but on rebound, there's basically rebound and settles immediately. Fox, it's going to give a little bit more and still rebound. If you kind of think about it in terms of a timeline, the rancho takes maybe three seconds to settle. Bill Stein will take maybe one second to settle and then the Fox 2.0s will take maybe one and a half to two inches. Like so, no, Fox still have good rebound, but it's not floppy yeah. like Rancho where it's like non-existent. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely some, I guess, support yep. in, in the rebound yep. with the Foxes. What has been your favorite shock to tow with out of the four that you've been on so far? Uh, to tow with for sure the Bill Stein. The Bill Stein. Yeah, yeah, there's just so much more not so much more. There's there's more support when you're comparing the Bill Steins to the Foxes, and then Bill Steins to the Ranchos. Is world's difference, <laughs> night, night and day difference. Yeah. yeah, and that's even like towing a, a side by side is, is noticeable. Yeah, with only that tongue weight on the side by side, and the trailer is probably only about. 350 pounds which isn't much at all yeah i would say the the foxes compared to the bill steins i would say it's with a small trailer like that is yeah. it super noticeable okay but when you're pulling more weight the bill steins i i say shine over the foxes yeah. and you just towed your 7,000 or 6,000 pound tacoma on the fox right i did okay. yeah that, uh, almost a thousand miles right um, probably even longer yeah it was a 1500 mile road trip to, to yeah. moab okay. um Trailer weighed about 7,500 pounds okay. total. It did fine. It did fine. Yeah. Yeah. Did you miss the Bill Stein? I, I would have liked to have the Bill Steins. Yeah. It, they're, they're like around a couple of couple of passes. It, it was a little windy, mm -hmm. um, and and I did get a little bit of a, a shake. Fox really shine in the comfort on the daily drive, right? And probably on the the chattery gravel road kind of stuff. Yeah. Probably like moderate JV terrain, moderate trail terrain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like when we were up in a mammoth, the roads on on the other side of the 395 that we were driving through, mm -hmm. like those flat roads. Yeah. It, super comfortable through that. This probably feels a lot better on washboard too compared to Bill Stein. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Bill Stein will just chatter your teeth out whereas this it'll eat up those it'll kind of uh, just round off those those hard corners of the of the washboard, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's almost I would say it's almost like airing down. They're taking a couple pounds of uh, pressure out of your that, tires. That's a good way to put it. What else is t going on in the to with the towing situation? So you got Sumo Springs. We, I know you mentioned that before. Yeah, so right now I have the Sumo Springs um, the back end is lifted. 
with the Deaver Adelief. Okay. So I did add the one inch spacer for the sumo springs, mm -hmm. which it does fine with the side by side mm -hmm. and the side by side trailer just because it's yeah. so much lighter. Yeah. But if I was to do that Moab trip with the Tacoma again, mm -hmm. I would definitely put on airbags. Okay. Yeah, just because the sumo springs, like there's about two inches mm -hmm. between um, in between the sumo spring and where it engages on uh -huh. the axle. Yeah. So that two inches is or unsupported by the, the sumo spring. So when I have Tacoma trailer yeah. it, it, and it's so much weight, it, it takes up that two inches and extra inches from the, the sumo spring. At engagement. normal ride height. So the sumo spring is actually a, just a gigantic foam bump stop. Blue in this case, um, that's, you can, you can basically set it up to where it's always engaged if you're always carrying loads or like Jeff has it where it's like not always engaged, it's only really meant to be engaged um, under significant load, but it sounds like with a really heavy setup, you want not, you almost don't even want the a bump stop. You want something that's just gonna keep the static ride height higher at all times, right? Yeah. And you've got a leveled, leveled out vehicle. And so you were talking about before, um, where if you don't have a leveled vehicle, then you may not need that much support because yeah. of just the different ride heights. And so we've got a little bit extra going on with the truck that might not apply to everybody. Like a customer will ask about getting the truck completely level. Sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll recommend them not to do it yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Because when you load stuff up, you want that back end is gonna settle. And that's why trucks yeah. come from the factory yeah. uh, with, with some rake. Like in this case, the truck is perfectly level. So, um, and there's no space in, or there's space in between the sumo springs and the axle. Mm -hmm. So when I load it up, even with mountain bikes, sometimes the, the front end will be yeah. higher than the, the, than the back. Yeah, I've, I've gone from liking a level vehicle to liking a little bit of rake because I'm always loading up the back as well. The redheaded stepchild out of the stage four now is, are the Rancho 9000s that we just, uh, we just haven't liked on any of our, I, I haven't liked them on my, my power wagon. I didn't like them on your truck. I don't think you liked them very no. much on your truck. Um, and we've, and since then, no one else wants to install them on their vehicles. <laughs> so the 9000s were okay. The settings made small differences, but here's the RS 9000 piston, 31 millimeters versus a Fox 2.0 piston around here at 46 millimeters. So just a little word of caution. If you're thinking about spending $120 for a Rancho 9000 adjustable shock, I mean, these Foxes are 180 and just feel way better. Mm -hmm. And you can service them. And the Bilstein shocks are much cheaper actually, about 80, 90 bucks for the rear shocks and 120-ish for the front. So price points definitely make a difference, but everything we've tested so far is within, you know, within the the five to six hundred dollar budget range that's like a very reasonable cost to like improve something that you experience literally every day of your life if you're if it's a daily driver yep. right so just kind of throwing that all out there we sell it all but yes yeah, right now this is stage four of the silverado buyer's guide we're going to link it up in the comments let us know what you guys want to see uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys want to see a long travel suspension on some kings or some foxes but i think what we've got next are the eibach 2.0 pro truck coilovers so eibach just they didn't just come out with these but um, they are new for this vehicle yep. but these are our newest addition to the truck market in the past couple years so far steve on the ranger is really liking these a lot uh, we've had the we have a similar product on another vehicle that I'm impressed with so keep an eye out for that coming up because those are next what one thing that people a lot of people do ask is what tire size i have oh yeah um and these are a 305 70 17 which is equivalent to about a 34 and a half inch tire or okay. 30, 34 inch tire okay could you squeeze a 35 in there i could probably do a 315 70 17 uh -huh. with a little bit more trimming yeah i did cut the the mud flap so you're on a 34 and how much of lift is the fox are the fox giving right now foxes are at two two, two. inches gotcha yeah. are the ifp coilovers more height available out of those or no. two inches as well. Yeah, it's two inches oh, as gotcha. well. Gotcha. We know a lot of people are looking for a two and a half inch to three inch lift all the time on these vehicles. Um, you really usually need to go, if you want to do it within the shock tower and not a budget kind of leveling spacer, you're most likely going to have to move into a two and a half inch uh, body. These eye box though, how much do those get? Are those going to give on, on this if you wanted it? 
two, uh, two and a half. I, I believe the iBot coilovers go up to three inch. The iBot, the leveling struts go two and a half. And then the 5100s are two and a half as gotcha. well. Gotcha. Fox is very conservative on the right height adjustments. It's not all the same. Three inches on the front of this, you really got to make sure you got a, a good shock in there. You get, need some up, up, upper control arms, align your vehicle. On the, the Fox 2.5s, you could actually go up to three and a half okay. on those coilovers. Gotcha. As long as you have uh, upper control arms. Okay. Fitment is the same with the Trail Boss and the AT4s, except the Trail Boss and AT4s are two inches. Uh, two inches. Two inches. Two and a half instead of three and a half? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, two and a half instead of three and a half. Yeah, so the only real major difference on Trail Boss versus non-Trail Boss is basically an inch. Is it one inch? It's one inch of a lift over non-Trail Boss models. Yeah, one, uh, one inch height difference, yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments what you're looking for next. Subscribe to stay up to date on the Silverado and all the other buyer's guides we have. We've got a Ranger buyer's guide happening, a, an Xterra buyer's guide happening, a Bronco buyer's guide happening, a Power Wagon buyer's guide happening, a couple Forerunners. We're, we're doing the thing here and testing all of these shocks and all of our own vehicles. So I appreciate Jeff your time and uh, we'll catch you guys next adventure. Thanks so much.